Uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, I'm uh, Gerard Kindes. I'm research and insight senior specialist at JOSU. Uh, and the role of sports, play, and physical activity uh, is well established for individuals and communities. Uh, in July 20, uh, 2002, an inter tax, inter uh, Interagency uh, Tax Force was established by the UN Secretary General to embed sport in their programs. And that marked the beginning of a systematized approach and uh, official way of dealing with sport as sport for development and peace. Uh, this approach to sport was has always been part of people's life but that was a very systematic way of doing it and from that moment many agencies enter the field of sport for development governmental agency non-governmental agency but in the discussion we are going to have it is how sport for development entered the field of uh, sporting events uh, the fifa world cup Start, uh, started with uh, embracing sport for development in beads and also in delivering World Cups. And in 2010, the FIFA had a Football for Hope program. But more importantly, what matters to us is the FIFA World Cup 2022 uh, in Qatar. Uh, and sport for development was quickly introduced in that program uh, in the bid uh, from the beginning in 2010 generation amazing which is a football for development program for the fifa world cup qatar 2022 was already in south africa participating in the world cup and all the activities related to sport for social change sport for development uh sport for peace programs before qatar won the bid uh this one hour of discussion is the generation amazing what generation amazing does what they've been doing locally regionally and more importantly how generation amazing is adjusting and adapting to the change from physical activity football on the pitch to the virtual environment we have to operate in. Our panelists today are Charles Strickland, Partnership Manager at Generation Amazing, Mohamed Al Muhanadi, Partner Officer, Generation Amazing, Shouk Al Suleiti, Generation Amazing Youth Advocate. They will be discuss. They will be discussing what they do and how they transition from uh, field activities, field programming, to virtual programming. Before we move into the discussion, just a few elements of housekeeping. The first thing it is uh, in for the audience. If you have questions, please type your question in the chat window and I'll convey it to the uh, panelists. The second is we have live caption available. It's at the bottom of your screen. Click the setting, but setting button to enable it. And the third thing, the session is recorded and will be made available to the audience, to your friend, to your colleagues after. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm welcoming everybody. Welcome to the panelists. I will start with Charles. Charles, can you please tell us a little bit about Generation Amazing? What do you do about yourself first? Because you have a long experience in agencies about Generation Amazing. What do you do? Uh, thank you very much, Gerard. Firstly, uh, a great pleasure to be able to, to engage with yourself and the wider SC community to talk further about Generation Amazing. I think Generation Amazing doesn't need any great introduction 
to the, the wider SD community, but I'll try and give a little bit of background to where GA has come from, where GA is, and where GA is going into the future. Um, as for myself, uh, you reference, I'm, I'm currently working as the partnerships manager with Generation Amazing. I've been with GA and the SC now for just over 20 months. Prior to coming to the SC, I had had a, a lengthy career in the development and humanitarian sector, working with a variety of UN agencies, delivering support for development programs as part of wider projects and working with a variety of NGOs. So I'm quite familiar with the development space that Generation Amazing is a part of and wishes to take a leadership role within. Speaking more specifically to Generation Amazing, as you've referenced at the top end, GA has been in existence now for, for approximately 10 years. Generation Amazing was, as most of us know, part of the original bid for Qatar to host FIFA 2022. It was an essential part required by FIFA that there be a, a CSR component, a giving back, a sport for social good um, facet to this moving forward. So GA was part of the original bid, but prior to GA, prior to Qatar winning the bid, the, the organizing committee was as well active in trying to deliver programming on the ground. So from 2010 through 2020, we have delivered We've, we've delivered programming in no less than two dozen communities across 10 different countries. In 2010, in particular, we were working on programming in India, Nepal, Pakistan, and in Syria. Um, since then, we've expanded our scope, as I, as I referenced earlier, to 10 countries globally. We work regionally within the GCC in Qatar, a strong domestic program that works both with national government schools and international schools. We've scaled up from, from just a handful years ago to in excess of 50 schools today that we're currently collaborating in. And as I say, in excess of 10 countries where we're working. So we have programming external to, to Qatar. We're working in places as varied as the Philippines, in Tacloban, a community that was impacted in recent years by Typhoon. We work in Nepal as well, recovery programming, focused on communities that were impacted by earthquake in recent years. In Pakistan, we have programming that looks at, at post-conflict recovery in the north, as well as programming that's currently underway in, in communities in Sindh province, um, areas that were affected by flooding in recent years. We have extensive footprints that are growing in Africa, a new program that's burgeoning, if you will, in Rwanda, and some discussions with other potential partners for other programming in East and Central Africa, and a new program that's gotten underway in the last year in the Caribbean, in Haiti, with the, the as a partner with the NGO CORE. CORE was established by the actor Sean Penn post-earthquake um, for response in Haiti. We're, we're collaborating with CORE to deliver GA programming there. In addition to the delivery components that we do with young people in these various countries, we as well have a strong component that is engaged with workers here in Qatar. So we 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 have we have an extensive program in various of the of the labor camps, um, in particular Asian city, where it's it's quite an exhaustive group of, of people that we work with regularly and which we're trying in some ways to continue to work with against the current situation. Additionally, GA separate to the, the programming that we deliver with partners and communities are engaged in various other types of discourse for collaboration. So for instance, this past year in 2019, along with B4D, our, our behavioral insights unit at the SC, we organized at the UN a half day training function focused on the use of behavioral insights, sport and the prevention of violent extremism. We've engaged various UN actors on discussions around the use of sport for the prevention of violent extremism, looking at how sport can contribute towards educational outcomes and protection outcomes. So GA from its original inception more than a decade ago of delivering programming for vulnerable communities in far flung countries has really scaled up to, to be at the world stage in delivering its program across the board with UN actors, international NGOs, 
top class and smaller scale football clubs from AS Roma to Leeds, Sheffield, et cetera, et cetera. So we, we, we've got this, this huge platform that has been focused on direct delivery, in-person delivery, and then in the last eight to 10 weeks, a halt, a pause, if you will, in terms of that direct delivery. And that's where, where some new ideas had to be formulated as to how to remain relevant in this time of COVID. And so we've transitioned not all of, but a fair portion of our program to an online online portals, be it be it through the the the, the sessions that happen through our our master coaches twice a week, our sessions that are are focused on discussions with with sports stars and 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 other discussions around gender. I'll leave it there for now. Um, hand back to you, Gerard, and then on to my colleagues to maybe do a deeper dive into some of those topics. Thank you, Charles. This is a broad reach and a very diverse delivery. They're all focusing on uh, people and social uh, change, uh, peace, violence prevention. Uh, now, as you mentioned, the COVID situation is uh, preventing the face-to-face -face, uh, interaction. Uh, everything is down. Sport clubs cannot play anymore. Everybody is uh, home in most countries in the world. Uh, Mohammed, in this particular time, you cannot do football for development on the pitch anymore. Uh, physical activity with a coach in front of you is not possible anymore. Uh, explain, can you explain a bit more what uh, Charles had mentioned, just mentioned about how G Generation Amazing is adapting, is adjusting to this shift in the way we used to deliver, you used to deliver your programs. Uh, thank you, Gerard, and thank you uh, uh, to Charles. Um, I think that to answer this question, um, you know, I just have to say first that you know, Generation Amazing, when, you know, when we made the decision to transition, um, you know, from the field, um, from the physical delivery on the field to the online sessions, um, you know, we faced numerous challenges um, in the beginning um, because we had to think about how do you translate, um, you know, the physical delivery on the field where you're used to interacting with kids um, to online sessions where you can actually, uh, you know, see uh, uh, the beneficiaries in front of you. You know, you can't see the kids that you're working with. You can't see the workers that you're, you know, that, that, that you're usually working with. Um, and um, you know, that was that was quite difficult in the beginning. You know, that was that was quite the challenge. Um, and then in the big, you know, in, in, in the and we then we rea we realized that um, you know for the future generations, um, it's it's a little different. Um, you know, for them, uh, when it comes to online learning, because they're, you know, they're used to this type of, of e, um, uh, you know, learning environment. They're used to online learning. They're used to, you know, just logging on to YouTube and, you know, learning everything from simple math equations all the way to football drills. You know, future generations find it easier to learn from these sessions. Young people find it easier to to learn from these sessions. So then, the other challenge, be, you know, be, uh, was that. Um, how do you ensure that that parents are engaging their children in our live sessions? Because you know, uh, when we're hosting a live session, we can't really control who's um, you know watching the 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 live sessions. You don't really you know you can't really uh, you know send them well you can send invitations out, but you don't really know who's going to log in and, and and actually join the live sessions. So how do you ensure that that the kids are actually watching these sessions? You know, um, you know as we know that that many kids um, you know rely on their parents to uh, or their legal their legal guardians to be able to watch these sessions um, and to have access. How do you you know the challenge becomes how do you ensure that the parents are engaging their children in our live sessions? And you know in the beginning this was actually very difficult to measure um, because you, as I said you can't really see who's joining this, these sessions. But you know um, after you know after the first week of, of our engagement. Um, our online engagement, we started seeing that the, the parents, you know, organically started sending videos of them um, delivering what Coach Mike and Coach Hamad have been, um, you know, delivering. They've been emulating these sessions um, 
and basically filming uh, their kids and sending it sending it to GA um, and sharing it with their peers, telling us that you know we are delivering these these sessions that you're that GA is delivering, um, and you know we are implementing this at home. Um, so this is where we measure the success um, of, of 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 the engagement. When you see that um, you know parents are engaging their kids at the, you know in the activities that we're doing. When we see that you know uh, people are sending in um, the simple workouts that we're doing and the activities that we're organizing for them, um, you know tw uh, twice a week uh, by our coaches. But then we faced another challenge, which is. Um, how do you deal with the absence of human interaction um, of that human interaction element in your sessions right i mean you're used to deliver to 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 schools and and you know you work with workers or other beneficiaries on the field you know you're used to having that um, that emotional connection on the field where you see people face to face you know you understand their emotion you understand that you know if, if they like the session that you're delivering or not if they you know if they're actually engaged or not but when you can't see um, you know the the, the 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 people that you're delivering with if you can't see the kids if you can't see the workers if you can't see who you're delivering these sessions to that becomes quite the challenge um, and you know if you think about it from the coach's perspective when you're standing um, you know, by yourself, uh, you know, out in your out in your yard and, you know, you, you, you have your phone on the tripod and it's just you looking at that screen. Uh, you, you lose that, you know, there's this absence of this human interaction element and that's quite the challenge. This is something that we're not really used to. Um, and the, the, you know, uh, GA has dealt with 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 this challenge um, in in a very interesting way. So Coach Hammond and Coach Mike actually started bringing in uh, their kids to uh, you know to their sessions. Um, you know, first that adds the the human interaction element that's missing. Um, you know, it shows you that you know it gives that kind of authenticity um, to to the sessions and also the credibility that you know these sessions actually do work. Uh, you see the kids are actually getting engaged and you know we all love to see um you know some nice human interaction in, in the sessions it's you know it's it's always better than seeing um you know just one person uh delivering um and and talking to us but it's really nice to ha to see that that you know that, that that connection going um which is which is you know usually absent from our online you know from generally from online sessions um secondly um, there is also another way that they approach this. Um, you know, uh, Coach Hamad actually had delivered a, a joint session when one of the w with one of the colleagues in Oman. Um, this is particularly important uh, because you know it shows you that you can um, you know do do workouts and you can organize activities and you can deliver and have that human interaction uh, element in your sessions. Um, in, a, in a creative way, right? If you can't, you know, if you can't call uh, one of your colleagues to come to your home and deliver a session with you, you know, you can just you can just give them a call, even if they're, you know, uh, you know, 5,000 miles away, and they can join in and deliver something with you. So that's that's you know that's how how we approach this challenge. Um, and there are a few advantages to to you know to the transition from field um, to online uh, uh, sessions, you know. Uh, for instance, our delivery for children in Qatar um, is usually delivered in schools, right? Um, so the PE teachers and coaches would have that interaction maybe uh, twice a week with the students. Um, very similar to what we're doing on the online sessions. However, now, uh, you know, we have direct access to parents. Um, that ensures that we're providing, um, you know, uh, providing the parents with some tools for them to engage their children from home, even beyond the crisis. Um, you know, usually, um, you know, on a, you know, in normal circumstances, I would say, um, you know, we we get in touch with the kids in the schools and we see them in the schools, and you know, we 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 deliver our programs in schools. But now, because of because of the nature of the COVID nineteen situation, delivering at home, now we actually have that direct access to parents. So, you know, after the crisis, we're hoping that. You know, we maintain this uh, this connection with the parents, and that you know we continue delivering in schools, delivering to workers, and also delivering you know online sessions um, at home that parents can can learn from, can you know can get some some tools and some insight and some knowledge on 
um, you know, what they can do to engage, uh, you know, their, their, their children in some level of, of fun exercise or activities beyond school hours, you know, especially for parents who face difficulties um, of engaging their children in organized after school activities and whatnot. And then the second advantage is that, you know, this actually provides us with uh, with a new experience in terms of expanding our professional, uh, uh, capa you know, capacities or capabilities. You know, in, a, in our globalized world, we need to deliver online modules even beyond times of crises. Um, you know, we, we have a far reach, um, you know, because of the Internet. If we can't, you know, we, there and there are many uh, uh, communities in need around the world that, you know, sometimes we can't reach to um, and and we can do that through, um, you know, these online sessions. You know, our role is to build capacities of young people on the ground and shaping young leaders and empowering those at the margins. So online sessions provide us with the learning experience that we need uh, when we're designing uh, future online engagements and initiatives. So after this crisis, um, you know, after this crisis, when you, you know, there are already plans of, 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 of designing some sort of, some sort of, uh, you know, of online uh, uh, programs, whether it's the, the train the trainer module or whether it's, uh, you know, uh, whatever that you can deliver, you know, whatever that we can deliver as, as a football for development component, we can actually deliver that, um, you know, through online modules. So this is giving us actually the, pro the, the professional, you know, uh, this is building on our professional capacity to be able to actually build that and develop that um, you know, much, e you know, much easily and readily um, in the future. Thank you, Thank Mohammed, you. Uh, for very good explanation about how online works or is working right now. Uh, I'll get back to you. I have a, one question from uh, the audience and two questions and I'll share with, with you later. Uh, I'll go to Shuk. Shuk, uh, tell, present, introduce yourself a little bit more. I think Mohammed and uh, and Charles are familiar faces at SC. You are a youth advocate. Introduce yourself, what you do, and following that, tell us how the transition to online, transition to digital virtual sessions, it's working in a considering the gender differences. So yeah, um, my name is uh, my name is Shok Al Salaiti and I joined Generation Amazing since 2014. I volunteered to be a part of Generation Amazing program because it's an inspiring program that uses football as a tool to to enhance community and encourage in the world. Uh, we've traveled to Brazil, we took leadership uh, workshops and we visited lots of non-governmental organizations that uh, that deliver a message that you, through football they can uh, help people to get out of the, uh, let's say, a bad uh, uh, life choices and uh, go to a better life choices using uh, non-governmental organization, using workshop, using football basically in different aspects and workshop uh, to deliver this message. So uh, I've been with them since 2014 and until now, and uh, I've uh, adapted, I've, I, I, was, I was with them in uh, Football 3 uh, Festival, which is used as also football, uh, street football, and deliver a different message being, being inclusive, gender equality, and a lot of areas that uh, other societies face. With the, with the transition to uh, online uh, sessions, because Generation Amazing focus on football to develop uh, people and communities, now they, they don't have these physical interaction. They cannot play football to deliver a message or they cannot uh, encourage people to come using football and then deliver a different kind of message that they will that will be helpful for them. So uh, uh, I personally joined with them using live sessions and I interviewed uh, three uh, women, successful women in the career of football and uh, they've been uh, sharing their stories and I think this is a very effective way using internet as, while staying safe during COVID-19 and yet learn about how they followed their dreams and how they were persistent and what's the challenges they faced uh, to succeed in their career as, as a woman and ladies. This was helpful and inspiring for both uh, ladies and males 
and uh, this uh, encouraged people uh, to deliver a stronger message and to follow their dreams and uh, achieve their goals. So like football as a sport is mainly uh, for males and have a lot of uh, male fan base, yet it also have a lot of uh, female fan base. And I believe that uh, these uh, female, female successful women do deliver a stronger message because they are uh, a great and successful examples and uh, they do relate more to these people who suffer from similar uh, problems and uh, do suffer from uh, dis yeah, disappointing uh, communities and societies and maybe similar uh, problems that's what encourage them and uh, inspire them to to deliver to become a better person and follow their dreams and this is using football because these three people I interviewed was Shema which is a football coach and uh, Lisa uh, Emily Thestrop and Lisa and both of them have a lot of uh, followers and do work on career that people can want and uh, would like to join so I think that's uh, the transition and I think it was a good way interviewing these people was a very inspiring way that despite COVID-19 it did succeed despite that we, we, we couldn't measure the successful how successful it was but yeah for me I think it's very successful. Thank you. Uh, I'll share a question from the audience. Uh, how do you think this impacts future generations? Who are in vulnerable communities and have very limited access to the internet. Also parents, how does have the capacity, parents who don't have the capacity to do so due to economic and educational reasons, especially as they are considered the majority of our target audience and how GA can overcome this challenge. And before I pass it to uh, Mohammed or Charles, this there's a, a similar question from Michele. Did anyone, the previous one was from Amna, from uh, Michele, did anyone from GA community, especially in poor countries, face issues with connections device, devices and so on in other world access, in other world access, difficulty to access the internet, is it impacting or uh, uh, the online sessions, uh, considering what we call the digital device, uh, which is relatively is all often based on economic resources. Who wants, Mohammed, you want to answer it? And Charles can add, who can add uh, their, their uh, thought on it as well. Mohammed? Definitely. Um, in terms of in terms of, of, of you know of getting access to the online sessions and you know in terms of, of, of you know uh, despite the the economic um, you know situation of many of our um, you know of, of, of the people that we work with on the field the young people that we work with on the field we actually see a lot of interaction um, you know from the young people that we see on the field whether you know whether from you know the ambassadors or the advocates in Pakistan uh, Nepal, um, you know, uh, Jordan uh, and many other countries that we operate in, um, we actually haven't seen a lot of a lot of, of, of negative impact on it. Um, actually, we've seen a lot of um, of engagement uh, with uh, the GA con. Um, you know, the 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 uh, the ambassadors actually the international ambassadors are you know usually um, sending in videos of, of themselves you know, playing football, um, you know, engaging with the material that GA, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, produces and, you know, they ask a lot of questions in, in the online sessions. So in terms of, of having access to that, I think that um, on a larger scale, yes, this might be, uh, you know, a, a, an issue. Um, but but with the with the young people that we're currently engaging with, um, you know, a lot of the cohort that we're that we're that we're currently engaging with are very engaged, are very much engaged with their online sessions. Um, you know, even with the limited resources that they have, and in terms of delivering sessions um, in 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 you know at home, um, you know, the coaches have proved. You know, our coaches, you know, Hamad and and Mike proved that you can actually uh, deliver a session. Um, with not a lot of equipment, you know, 
And I think that's key in, in delivering these sessions, you know, during times of crises or, you know, even beyond times of crises is that, you know, you can deliver a session. Uh, you don't have to have cones to deliver sessions. You can use digital boxes. You know, you don't have to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, ropes. You can use T-shirts. You can use whatever that you have, um, you know, in your hand. To, to do that. And, you know, when we go to uh, many of the disadvantaged communities, you know, a lot of the kids, uh, you know, and, and not even disadvantaged communities, even growing up, you know, uh, as kids, we used to just, you know, place, you know, place a couple of shoes uh, as, as goalposts. And then, you know, we just, we just uh, play a game. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, we don't, we don't think that, you know, th this is going to be a very limiting factor in, in the sessions that we're th delivering, just because, you know, the sessions that we're delivering online, um, the activities are not very uh, complicated. They're very accessible, and we make sure at GA to deliver something that's accessible to everybody and that everybody could do. Um, you know, many of the activities just require a ball, and you know, it doesn't even need to be a football. It could be a tennis ball. It could be whatever that you have um, in your hands. So, yeah, I think that uh, that's not uh, that's not very much a, a limiting factor. What do you think, Charles? Pardon me, sorry, sorry for the slow draw on the mic. Um, just, just to add on, so I think if there have been any challenges that we've encountered to date, they've been the, the 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 technical challenges that we may have faced is because everybody now around the world is on the internet. So bandwidth has become a challenge. So you you'll find you'll find find slow connection times in some in some instances, but for the most part, we've had very good uptake. In terms of our 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 attendance, if you will, from various stakeholders, various communities, I think as well, um, put putting aside the sessions that we do with the coaches, the discussions that that Shuk has participated in, in terms of gender, have been have been remarkably inspiring for for young people broadly, because th these are you're speaking to to um, we're speaking to people who are not named stars, if you will, in, in a particular space, but they are people who have succeeded and excelled in their space and they they represent that success, that that excellence um, as 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 a growth opportunity. And they're able to convey it in a language in a very simple way that people generally understand. So I think we've been incredibly fortunate that way. The the, the talks that we've had online as well with the likes of Kafu. People who are fans of Kafu will know where he comes from. They'll know his, the history of, of who he is, not just as a player, but as a person at a community level. And they can they can they can resonate they, as listening in as a young person. They can resonate lived experience from where they're coming from, with where the where Kafu is coming from, where 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 whomever is coming from. And so we've been incredibly successful that way. I think the challenge is going to be to take what we've been doing online um, because we're we're in this infancy stage if you will with our programming online is to transition that to much more substantive and impactful programming that we can look at measurable outcomes from so how can we measure an outcome for change from the discussions that Shuk is having particularly with 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 young women players or or young women change actors um, how can we how can we measure impact um, from the discussions that Mohammed is having with football players or our conversations with with other change agents as we move forward? So we need to be able to sort of identify an outcome and measure the measure our ability to deliver and impact that outcome as the programming moves forward online. But I think we've had this wealth of experience. Um, eight weeks ago, GA was not looking at delivering programming online as radically, as rapidly as what we have been doing over the last several weeks. And if I try and look at where GA is in reference to what I see of other other like organizations working in the development space or the sports space, we have in it, we've we've created this immense platform out of nothing in a short span of time that has an immense in the immense scope of engagement from a variety of stakeholders, be they representatives of the International Federation of the Red Cross, be they representatives of AS Roma Football Club, be they young women who are who are going through challenges linked to social isolation because they're locked down due, due to COVID-19. 
they are looking at these exercises that can be done in living rooms, that can be done on front driveways, that can be done on on the 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 back deck of your apartment, and they're seeing that that actually everything that can be done on the pitch in many ways that can be played out, that can be discussed, and that can be actioned for a change can be done from your own home, and and. And I think that if we can, as I said earlier, look at how we measure outcomes from that, the impact will be in a much better place for that next step in our growth, the trajectory of GA online. Thank you, Charles. Um, Shuk, I would like to ask you from the digital divide access and, uh, you know, the Internet is not always a safe place for especially with the gender situation. What have you experienced so far? Uh, and how is it working? I think I think uh, it is effective. It is in, uh, inspiring. Yet uh, I think because of it's because of the way we're delivering it, we cannot truly measure how effective it is because the people that uh, were uh, were in joining the sessions uh, we cannot know how uh, how how again how joining how focusing are they on these sessions, and we cannot measure whether they are uh, learning a lot, whether they are understanding because of that. Yet I think, based on the positive comments that I've been reading uh, in the previous uh, sessions, people are asking and people are learning and people are motivated by uh, these stories. Also, uh, internet. Uh, doing these interviews uh, using uh, live platforms can uh, be a little bit, um, let's say, uh, frustrating when it comes to cyberbullying and uh, shy of cameras. Yet uh, there were not a lot of these and I believe the sessions were successful. People were in the comments I've been reading uh, how people have uh, been asking how to overcome uh, this challenge, how hard to be empowered. And uh, these women I've been interviewed, they were so inspired and inspiring. They were so uh, confident about uh, their career and how did they uh, pass from, uh, from, how did they develop from previous. And I think uh, this is a very successful uh, sector to succeed in, I mean. And Thank you. Uh, you mentioned the successful football players. Uh, Charles also mentioned Kafu, uh, the legend, which uh, who are also SC ambassadors. They are part of this programming. Mohammed, can you tell us a little bit more? How do you engage with them on the online delivery platform, and how is it working? Um, in terms of, of, of the power of these interactive discussions, you know, such as the GE Stars chat and the One Pass um, segments, um, I think that, you know, what we need to address is, you know, what the impact these sessions have on people, you know, what conclusions do they draw and what do young, what do young people specifically learn uh, from these sessions? And I think that, um, you know, the, 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 the 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 um, you know the the great thing about these sessions is that young people are provided access to these stars to ask their questions or to share their comments. You know, um, we young people are are provided with that with that opportunity to 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 engage with someone that they see as a role model. You know, young people like to see someone that they, they that they identify with, some someone that they look up to, and someone um, you know that they want to hear from. And these. Uh, live sessions do exactly that when we're hosting Cafu or Hernan Crespo or you know even even young players like Justin Kluivert you know it's it's people it's 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 players that that young people identify with that people that you know they see on the field and they want to emulate they want to be like you know they wear their shirts like them you know they 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 uh you know they emulate their their um uh you know their celebrations after scoring a goal they they really want to learn from these people and you know this is where these sessions become important because you know we're attracting a lot a lot of young people who love football but also you know we try to share the ga the ga values um you know through through these footballers um 
you know, the footballing community is the biggest sporting community in the world, um, but it's very hard for, you know, to get access to football stars um, who are role models to, to many of these young people. And, you know, GA is being this platform that, 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 that um, you know, that gives young people that access, um, you know, to their role models. So, um, you know, the benefit of that is that, you know, young people are, are motivated by, by the experiences that footballers share and the values that are important, um, you know, uh, uh, to everybody. You know, through through these sessions, we discuss, you know, what's how how did these um, you know footballers get where they you know where they where they are today and how they achieved what they achieved and what 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 does it take for them to get where they are right now? You know, the discipline, the values, the motivation, and you know, and then we we just have a fun conversation where we let young people submit their questions. And, you know, me as a moderator or, you know, whoever is moderating these sessions, we are keen to uh, to give the opportunity to everybody and to answer every question. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's always it's always reading every question that we get. Um, and, uh, you know, we really try to be that uh, that platform for young people. Thank you. Um, in terms of I just wanted to add one more thing in terms of the challenges. Uh, for that, um, yeah, in terms of the challenges for that, uh, I think that a huge challenge is the language barrier, right? You know, in terms of, 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 of communities in need and, you know, a lot of, we had numerous comments about, you know, people not understanding the dialogue and whatnot. Um, and, you know, youth from communities in need want to see their role models, but the language barrier created a huge challenge for them. Our approach to solving this problem, however, is that you know in terms of, of 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 instagram live sessions we can't really provide subtitles um that's a little hard especially because the conversation is 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 not you know it's not recorded it's live um and you know it's it is on instagram we are facing a lot of technical difficulties with instagram um so the way we're approaching this is to find the right balance um you know so far we've hosted um you know sessions in arabic uh sessions in english sessions in french and sessions in Spanish. So, you know, we have our approach is to find the right balance to, to provide access to, you know, uh, to, to a variety of, 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 of people or, to, you know, to, to a larger group of people around the world. Back to you, uh, Gerard. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm going to have, we have a few questions from the audience. Uh, the first one, is from Rosa. She is asking Shuk and uh, Mohammed. Uh, you have a much exposure to their, your peers in international GA communities. Uh, I would like to ask them how they think their peers are coping with COVID-19. Uh, Shuk, can you start uh, with the answer and uh, with the, uh, answering the question? how your peers you interact with in the international community are coping with COVID-19? How I appear to interact with the international community communities using, uh, I mean, through COVID-19? No, how so, your peers, your peers, the people you are interacting with in the international community, uh, yeah. how are they coping with uh, COVID-19? How they're coping? Uh, I mean, uh, when I interviewed, uh, Shayma, Lisa, and Emily. Uh, I asked them about COVID-19 a lot. To be honest, uh, how did they uh, how did they uh, stayed healthy at home through these uh, hard times, and how did they manage to stay connected to other people's uh, uh, friends, family, co-workers, co-players, and uh, everyone uh, they know? And they did uh, elaborate on that a lot about and they give tips to the audience about how to exercise at home how to focus on uh, empowering themselves and how to keep developing through uh COVID-19 and uh, not get frustrated and not get disappointed by these hard times and keep going because uh working uh, on these hard times is more even than working in the easy times and I personally gain tips I share tips and I think uh there were three different ladies from three different communities and I think this delivered a message to more audience and targeted more people around the world uh, and gave them tips and I give to you Mohammed. 
Uh, yes. I, um, you know, uh, we've actually been in touch with, um, you know, many of the uh, of the international ambassadors of the GA international ambassadors uh, during this, you know, during these unprecedented times. And, um, you know, many of them are actually very engaged in their communities, um, you know, during the crisis. Actually, one of the uh, of the Pakistani ambassadors, his name is, is Zahir. Is, uh, is Zahir. Um, he is uh, you know he's he's one of the he's one of the of the G ambassadors that actually started his own footballing academy um, in Pakistan, which is called the Makhdoom Academy, I think. Um, you know they they're doing very well and they're they're being very active in their communities. They're they're volunteering, um, you know, in preparing, um, you know, uh, basically food um, and and medical supplies to give back to their communities. Um, and a lot of them are actually engaging with the online content. Um, so there is a lot of of of, of engagement um, from the international ambassadors, and you know they're staying healthy and safe, uh, which is you know which we're glad to see. Um, but they're also you know being very engaged in in their communities. And is along the same same line. Another question from the audience from uh, Sana, how effective these sessions are in terms of teaching or raising awareness about living or surviving the COVID-19 crisis and dealing with their challenging environment at the same time? What are the skills and the tools this session can equip them with? Um, um, Mohamed, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, you know, based on the feedback that we've actually gotten from uh, some of our coaches, you know, especially Hamad, um, is that, um, you know, to deal with the COVID-19 crisis, we have to change the key messaging or the outcomes of the sessions, right? Um, in the past and during normal times, we use football for development to promote and instill, you know, leadership qualities and equality, among, you know, among other skills or traits or uh, or values. However, in the COVID-19 situation, we're focusing on um, the psychological aspect, primarily the mental uh, well-being of young people at home, addressing anxiety and fear due to the current situation we're all in, right? Uh, we're, we try to spread positivity and motivation um, to keep them going. So how, how do we do that? Um, you know, we do that through incorporating simple exercises that reduce, uh, you know, stress, that keep the heart pumping and that reduce stress. You know, we we do jumps, you know, fast paced, you know, runs and, and whatever that you can do. And, you know, you, you don't really need a lot of tools to do that. All you need is a four by four space um, and, you know, and, and your body and, and, and you can do that. You know, all you, you need to do is is to, you know, to, to, to basically get engaged, get moving um, and, you know uh, that that really helps in dealing with with anxiety and and addressing you know these kind of issues. Another way um, you know the coaches actually address that is um, by uh, having you know some kind of of, of creative um, uh, exercise or creative activity in which you know th there were cones that were placed in in the um, uh, on in the space um, that that were basically. Um, uh, that represented the stress factor, um, you know, uh, for the participant of the activity, right? And the participant had to clear out these cones to basically visualize that, you know, you need to kick out that stress, you need to clear up that clutter, that space, um, you know, for you to to, to have, uh, you know, an open mind, for you to be comfortable with that space that you have. So, so you know, we've been utilizing these kind of techniques or these kind of, 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 of you know, of, of, of key messages in in our workouts to address um, you know the COVID nineteen situation and uh, you know the fear and the anxiety uh, or basically the mental well being that we need to uh, you know improve during these times and uh, you know so far we actually had we actually had um, you know a lot of 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 of, of engagement um, you know from um, uh, from many people you know our our reach actually got to um, you know eighty thousand people. Um, you know, during these live sessions overall, uh, which is very far reaching. And I think that, you know, over the next weeks, as we get used to it and as we, you know, continue to develop our um, our professional capabilities in, in, in delivering these online sessions, um, you know, we're going to get more creative uh, with addressing these issues. 
uh, <coughs> you answered a question that came in about how many followers did you have for the session, you say 80,000. Uh, and uh, yeah, the other question is, uh, how how people can access the GS sessions already concluded? Do you have any recording? People can just go back and and replay to be to exercise. Mohammed. Yeah. Um, so uh, what we're doing right now is that we're, we will try to upload um, you know the sessions on uh, IGTV. Um, for people to actually see the sessions and 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 be um, interactive with it. Um, so I think this is what's going to happen in the future is that we're going to have the, the sessions uploaded to IGTV for people to access on Instagram and, and replay the sessions so they can learn from from the activities. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, let's let's continue tuning in to uh, to the sessions and actually seeing it live and participating with the coaches. OK. Uh, I think uh, have a okay. I have a, a question here that is a about does GA has a program to assist the children that participate in the program if they are capable to develop a career as football player? Uh, if they are not capable of developing a career as football player, in other words, that the program assists in showing alternate professions that can pursue if playing not possible. Means if you cannot be a football player, uh, I think uh, GS program is about playing uh, playing football for everybody. If you can be a football player, do you have any professional trajectory for for kids? Charles, yeah. can you answer that? Yeah, yeah Gerard, if, I, if you don't mind. I'm I mean, what GA is about is not about developing football stars. GA is about utilizing the transformative power of sport, the varying lessons that you can learn through playing that sport, transitioning those lessons from a pitch to a classroom to real life experience. So to date, what we've been looking at is, is team building, looking at leadership skills, looking at coping skills, et cetera, et cetera, with our, with our in-person programming, some of that has been transitioning to our online programming. And as we evolve both online and in parallel post COVID, the in-person programming, what we would look towards is developing more programming that targets young people and issues of employability. I'm conscious right now that whilst, and, I, and it's, it's, a, it's a number to be congratulated that we've hit this 80,000 plus mark. There are still many vulnerable persons communities, families that are not able to access our programming online and that it would be one good to try and create a different type of platform through our through our partner organizations in various countries where young people could somehow um, socially distance but still come together to participate in these programs, to observe these 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 sessions, but then in the fullness of time take those those that participation and translate it into an activity that happens at home and which can further happen in the community as, as time evolves. Um, but a key for us is, is again, not to build football stars, football players. If that happens, congratulations, yes. But even then, a football career is only so many years. People need to be, be skilled for the fullness of life. And what we're looking at in the fullness of time with our program is a stream of that to focus on how sport can help in terms of employability. OK, I hope that uh, answers uh, the question, George. Yeah, I think it, you answered the question. I have a question for Michele. It is also a question we uh, like to, to ask. It is, uh, will having been forced into online help when things go back to normal or sort of normal, strengthen the offline format itself? I, I mean, from my side, Gerard, I would say uh, we've been building an online profile for several months, working with, with various social media platforms to get the brand recognition, the name out there of what GA is, and to promote 
many of our past in-person activities robustly. I see building a very strong online platform that complements our in-person platform and vice versa. It's it's by happenstance that we've we've had this 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 strength of capacity to build an online platform as robust as what we have to date. There have been many lessons learned. We will most certainly over the coming weeks do some critical reflections in terms of what we've been able to deliver to date online and to sharpen the messaging around that and to make that messaging more accessible to a wider swath of beneficiaries so that 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 the lessons that we are trying to convey can be accepted by a wider community. But simultaneously, we're looking today at where we want to be in three, six, 12 and 18 months down the road, both in terms of our in-person delivery as well as an online delivery to ensure that they complement, that they strengthen and, and that they build, build better programming, but more importantly, build stronger individuals, stronger young people, stronger communities. Over to you, Gerard. Yeah. Thank you. I'll ask the same question to Shuk and Mohamed. Shuk can start about telling us how this transition uh, will affect the way you, are a youth uh, ambassador, uh, advocate with, with Generation Amazing. How is it going to, to, to transform your experience as a youth advocate? Yeah, so uh, personally, I think uh, I think uh, in the beginning of these sessions, I, I was uh, learning with the other audience. I was the connecting person that takes the message from the interviewed uh, person and delivers to the audiences. But uh, uh, after these sessions, I gained a lot about. Uh, uh, I learned a lot about those successful women, and uh, that focus. I, they focus on the point. They clarified it to the audience, and they person. And I think uh, after learning that, I can. Uh, I can deliver this message to my uh, society, my friends, my uh, family and my community. And I can, uh, instead of just uh, taking the advantages of these uh, successful stories, I can pass it by myself and refer to them as the success story that motivate me and other people around the world and around me personally, because I believe the change starts from myself and then I can change other people. And I did get affected by uh, these influencers, and hopefully, I can influence on other people too. Thank you, Mohammed. Mohammed, tell us about uh, your lessons learned from this experience, and how do you envision generation amazing ongoing um, I after think that, the crisis? I think that the most important thing, um, you know, to learn from from this is, is uh, you know, as we said, that we're developing our, our personal and professional capabilities doing these sessions. You know, in, the, in my first session, I was actually, you know, it was, it was very nerve wracking. I didn't expect that, um, you know, live sessions are actually this, uh, you know, they get to be this nerve wracking because I've never actually done one before. Uh, but, you know, to, to, to just appear in front of the camera um, and, you know, waiting for that, for the other side to connect, waiting for the other person to connect, you know, you have so many thoughts in your head um, about how it's going to happen and how it's going to run. Um, and you get so nervous, but then, you know, after a few sessions, you get used to it and you see that, you know, you, you actually see the impact that you have um, because of these conversations. You know, people, uh, people reach out to you and are from your community telling you that, you know, that these that these conversations were great, that these conversations were enjoyable and, you know, these conversations were enter entertaining and then these these conversations were very helpful. Um, and I think that, you know, uh, uh, personally, I really like the way that, you know, that we're doing these sessions. And I think that moving forward, um, you know, we're going to continue doing them. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a huge benefit for GA, um, you know, when connecting with, um, you know, with, with, with our colleagues abroad, our, you know, our beneficiaries abroad, uh, and, you know, with collaborating with different, different organizations and with young people, um, you know, uh, elsewhere by using this technology and by, uh, by, you know, utilizing these tools, um, you know, to deliver uh, something and to, to initiate conversations and, you know, to build that, um, you know, connection with people. Back to you, Jared. Yeah, we are almost uh, wrapping up the hour. I have just one comment I want, I'd like to share with you from uh, Joao Ferrer, uh, who asked about uh, the kids who cannot have a career in football. 
Thank you for your great answer. Uh, really amazing program. Congratulations. And on this note, I would like to ask all of you if you have any last thought you want to share before we close the session. We start with uh, Shuk. Uh, personally, uh, I shared what, what I have and your question was brief and I, I think I said everything I have. I think these inspiring stories were successful, were inspiring and were uh, reached to a lot of com uh, communities. Despite COVID-19, internet is a reliable uh, is a reliable way to deliver uh, a strong message to the most people you can, whether there is COVID-19 or not, internet will be a good way. And I think uh, because of COVID-19, we did learn how to improve our message, how to make it more inspiring and how to target uh, a larger audience. Uh, me personally, I did. In, in, I was encouraged. I was uh, more brave uh, in the second session more than the first, and in the third more than the second. But in the end, I believe this is a very strong and successful program, and I hope everyone do enjoy, learn, and inspire from it. Thank you, Mohammed. Last thought. I just wanted to say. Um, you know, thank you to Gerard and thank you to to Jusur and my colleagues for having this, you know, th this amazing conversation. This has been wonderful, and you know, uh, I think this is going to be very beneficial for those who are not very familiar with GA um, and and the GA um, online, you know, transition to online modules. I think that moving forward, this is going to be, um, you know, uh, really good, and I think that we should just continue, uh, you know, delivering amazing. Um, moving to uh, Charles. A final comment from my side would be that I think the SC and Qatar have a lot to be proud in, in terms of what Generation Amazing has delivered over the last 10 years, what G GA has been delivering over the last several weeks, and the future impacts that Generation Amazing will make both at home and internationally in the lives of young people. Irrespective of the challenges of COVID or other such scenarios, Generation Amazing continues to deliver amazing and will always continue to deliver amazing, especially when we have have such stars as as Shuka Muhammad part of our team moving forward. So a big thank you to, to them as well. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, thank you, Mohammed, Charles and Shuk. Uh, this was great uh, to facilitate. Uh, I was more a spectator um, learning and listening to you than really a facilitator. Uh, and thanks for, to the whole team of GA for being part of this program. Uh, this was a great experience, collaborative experience. Uh, I think uh, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, our next panel most likely will be next week. Uh, hope to continue the discussion online and offline. Thank you and be safe wherever you are. Uh, we will continue delivering and preparing to deliver amazing. Thank you.